from Jamaica um the only time I actually left Jamaica um was to Canada okay so I did my MGM program um for the first I came in July and I didn't I didn't eat much until my parents came up in December and they brought all the spices and the seasoning and the food <laughs> And then um, they brought over some food and then I started because I was searching for the Jamaican, the food that I was accustomed to and I could not find them. But now I know where everything is. Exactly. Um, according to history, um, Christopher Columbus, they said that those first, those um, people, they were um, violent. Yeah, savage. And then yeah, and then they um what happened was um they put them to work, but they were not used to that type of work. And two, the um the disease that came from those country, it mm -hmm. yeah, it kind of wiped them out. So the English did that time, they used them to conquer Jamaica by defeating the Spaniards. And then when the British came to rule now, they change over to um, uh, sugarcane and some other crops. But sugarcane was their, um, was the goal of the Caribbean. So um, they established a lot of plantations and they supplied sugarcane, rum and molasses to, um, to England, um, but then they needed they needed cheap labor, so that is where slave trade came in, and then um, they got Africans in that beautiful little Jamaica to form our culture. Um, it is very influential. The East Indians, the African, the the English, even the Chinese, they all kind of make up our culture. So like you'll see it in the food, you'll see it in our dance, you'll see it in other aspects of Jamaica. Well, for me, Jamaica, just being in Jamaica, being a Jamaican in Jamaica, um, it's a self sense of belonging. So I'm a part of that for like all my life. So that is what I'm used to. So yeah, just being, being a Jamaican in Jamaica was good enough for me. What you here in Canada? I'm still searching for it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and um, just out of curiosity, like, mm -hmm. uh, is there any time hard to maintain the balance between the two, like how you were as a person? in Jamaica, do you sometimes feel that you have to suppress it to be a different you know, person? Let me explain to you. When I, I come into Can Canada, I had this high list of things that I was going to do and, <laughs> and to accomplish because I am going to succeed in every aspect. When I came to Canada, I realized that there are have you ever heard about culture, culture shock? Because mm -hmm. yeah. I used to read about it and I'm like, oh, that's yeah. foolishness is because we don't try to adapt. But then when I came here, I experienced culture shock on a different level. I had to not only to adapt to the environment, the food. Yeah. The people, they're not so bad because... In Jamaica, you have all different types, as I say, in Jamaica. So that part wasn't bad. But I had to, um, I don't want to say break down. I had to have a open mind. I had to put everything, my beliefs, everything to the side and then start from scratch. It was hard at first. Um, it took a toll on me because when I was doing the MGM program and my living 
accommodation because I had to change to move like three times. <laughs> it took a toll. So um, right now I'm in the what do I say learning process. I am not where I want to be, but I'm way better than where I was when I just came here three years ago. I am adapting and I am learning new things. I was like probably one step from the top of the ladder. And now I am actually at the foot of it, yeah. trying to climb. So yes. And what I realized um, in Jamaica, your qualification and experience speaks for itself. In Canada, you networking helps a lot. I don't have a network right now, a big one that is. So um, I did this interview the other day mm -hmm. and talking to the, the people on the panel, um, I realized that networking plays a big part in even acquiring a job. In Jamaica, it was not, even if we had it, probably it was like 5%. But my qualification and my experience, my years of experience spoke in an interview or even before you get an interview. Mm -hmm. But that's not the case in Canada. Tourism, backside, and remittance. Remittance in people send money back home to their family in Jamaica. So that plays a big part. Mm -hmm. Initially, when we had the first case of the first two cases of COVID in Jamaica, the government shut down the country. Mm -hmm. No flight was coming in. We had flights going out. So that would have played a, a, a great part. Another thing, when you came to, when you go to Jamaica, you had to quarantine for two weeks. Now being a tourist, you will go for probably five days or seven days. Being in an, in a, in a hotel for two weeks, not going anywhere, it would not work. They also had a state of emergency where they had like curfews. Um, you could only come out certain time in the morning and in the evening. So that would not be an ideal setting for a tourist. For tourists, and then all of the attractions they were not up and running. Food, okay. entertainment, because you know, um, and um, with the athletes too, because you know that you saying both. Have you ever heard about him? Yeah, yes. 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 yeah, yeah. Oh, um, Bob Marley. Yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. And I uh, just would like to mention that even I watched the videos of Usain Bolt, like how mm -hmm. he gives his things to you know people who are working around him and how he shakes their yes. hands and makes them feel normal and you know that's mm -hmm. amazing and very inspiring for sure he has always been that way um when i went to um the university of technology like long time ago he just started so he always had people around him he was always the the center of attraction even before he became famous so that was something for him I think that we can say that comes from the culture. I believe yeah. that somewhere. Yes, we um we are we are a set of friendly people. Um, it comes natural for most of us. Not saying that we don't have bad people, but uh, majority <laughs> of us are are okay people. <laughs> I don't think we are at nationalism. We are at um what's the other one? Popular, popular, yeah, populism. populism. I think we are at. I think we are still there. Well, when I left, or based on what I'm seeing, we are still there, and so much that the, even the government in the last election, he realized that the young people and you know, the, the um, ordinary people, they carried most of the votes. Mm -hmm. He so, bought a pair of green clocks to match his party color. And he named himself Bro God. Oh my God. <laughs> he won the election because it was just like a, a song, um, um, dance hall song came out about Bro God uh. or something God, and he named himself Bro God. So 
people were drawn to him and what they did was for their campaign, they did um, both sides of the party, the Jamaica Labour Party and the People's National Party, what they did was um, they used um, dub. Think of any music that, think of a music, mm -hmm. any, any of your favorite music. And you have that singer tweak it. It was, it was an interesting campaign, let me say. So <laughs> they kind of tie in our culture and then they went down to the lower class to and it worked. Bring across, yeah, to win. Mm -hmm. And it's <laughs> nice, it's nice that you brought up music in your discussion of politics, because our next question is, what is a song? Um, and as you may know, this class is kind of about identity and stuff like that. So if you think of a song that kind of is like a Jamaican artist or represents who you are. then when it was more of a political movement as well because of whatever was going on and how offended Jamaican like people were with how they were oppressed that mm -hmm. this was reggae was more of a this is my understanding of mm -hmm. what I have read about it can you please more enlighten yeah but that? but but even the politics brought out the culture because because of what happened and because of where we were mm -hmm. and sometimes we we also had like we had a poly a part of our well we had a time when politics was violent and it was a part of our culture. We had the rebel rebellion part of us. Um, if you read Jamaican history, we had always been rebellious. We, we fight for what we want or we are violent towards our belief or we, anything that we, stands for, we stand for, we are happily to defend it. Is that a word? That don't sound right. But anyway, <laughs> we happily <laughs> defend it. Um, yes. So it's 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 culture. Everything about Jamaica is culture. If you hear we talk, we're passionate about everything, and cult. I think culture is what defines us and yes. who we are. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well. Thank you so much for speaking to us today, So Anne, and telling us about your personal experience as a Jamaican person who is living in Canada, and for your honesty and clarity. And we have enormous gratitude for the time that you gave to us today. And we wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors here and in Jamaica and wherever you may find yourself. Hi, I'm Val, and this is the part of the video where each of the group members in this teamwork assignment will just analyze our research process during this journey, as well as some of the insights that we were able to gain from interviewing Soan. Um, combined with the lectures from our global communications class. For me, something that this experience really brought out and highlighted was the importance of primary research. Primary research is when you speak to someone like we did with Soan, who's actually been there and done that. <laughs> the actual um, interview with someone from Jamaica really solidified a lot of the concepts for me, particularly when she talked about her actual experiences moving to Canada and not wanting to eat because the food was not familiar. That was something I could relate to and I can, it really helped me uh, kind of step away from what I read in the Lonely Planet guides. When Soanne was talking about still not having that feeling of comfort yet in Canada, I felt like I wanted to help, but at the same time, I know that it's not really something that I can do. When she talked about the politics, I found that very interesting because that's not something you really get to read much about in uh, travel guides or when you look up, you know, 
Jamaican music on YouTube, uh, you don't really get those personal insights. It was something I hadn't heard about, and so I appreciated, again, that primary research element. Thank you, Val. It has indeed been a pleasure working on the assignment. The diaspora research, both primary as well as secondary, has given me lots of insights on the different aspects of Jamaican culture and the not-so-different aspects of its nation's belief and ideologies. The primary research gave me the opportunity to study the opinion of Suan. While I myself have moved to Canada from India like last year itself, so the learning curve has been exceptional. The overall experience established the fact that factors like imagined community, cultural bias, prejudices and privileges can have drastically different point of views and yet similar in its core nature. So Anne clearly mentioned that she doesn't believe in the concept of nationalism and only associates herself with populist ideology. I believe the fact that she maintains reggae culture to be more of a political movement and a lifestyle showcases the Jamaican culture to be modern and reformative at its core. Resultantly, when she moved to Canada, she had to leave her prejudices behind and didn't see privilege in the same manner anymore. She doesn't see privilege as it is and instead focuses on the struggle to explore and establish herself. I could relate and understand that she had to leave her own status of privilege and start afresh because the change in jurisdiction led to her change in personal and professional status. As mentioned earlier, her experiences are relatable to the core concepts and theories of the coursework research. Thank you very much once again. It has been an honor to interact with Suan and to receive her informative and thought-provoking facts about the diaspora. The overall experience with the fellow teammates under the guidance of Ola Ulu has been remarkable. Thank you. Um, Adobe OKK, and I'll be reflecting on globalization in Jamaica. Having to reflect on this effect of globalization in Jamaica, I realized that globalization is generally helpful, even in several societies which confront um, more problems than benefits. Jamaica is uh, one area where there is an even impact that are felt and they are struggling to compete with larger industrialized communities due to the island's low resources. And also their agricultural sector used to prosper on bananas, coffee and sugar. And now other nations are making it tough for them to compete with. Also, Sowan noted this too. Thousands of folks have lost their jobs. On the other hand, Jamaica has benefited from globalization. Their primary dependency with the rest of the world is, is their thriving tourist industry. They, they are also some of the world's um, world most stunning beaches and peaceful resorts in Jamaica. Many people from other parts of the world visit Jamaica for a fun holiday. Moreover, Jamaica relies on remittances to support its economy. After learning about the consequences of globalization in Jamaica, I think I have been able to better understand the idea of globalization in Jamaica with other thoughts from Suwan, which made my understanding very um, clear. Hello everyone, it's Steve Kwan speaking. Um, and I just wanted to go over the five W's of our research. So first I'll start with the who. So who's conducted this research and who will benefit from it? Uh, the research was conducted by myself and the members of our team um, and who will benefit from it. I think primarily uh, the members of our group will benefit most from it. However, uh, if you've ever had any interest in Jamaica or learning a bit more about it, uh, our research could serve to inform you uh, in some way so the what, so what with this research, uh, what was done to complete it, and what processes were involved, what were the results and conclusion. Uh, so the way that we approached this research was to first start with a brainstorm about what we knew about Jamaica. Uh, then we conducted research online to um, confirm or learn more 
about the questions that we had about Jamaica. And then lastly, we conducted an interview. I think we had mixed results. In, in certain um, areas, we already knew quite a bit about Jamaica and were not very far off. Uh, however, in other areas, that we certainly uh, did learn quite a bit, both from the research uh, component as well as from our interview. When did this take place? When did the project start and finish? There was an immediate need for us to do it to pass uh, our class. However, in general, I think that this is a useful exercise just to understand a little bit more about a different culture and have the opportunity to uh, just learn about somewhere that we're not super familiar with, as well as get some experience um, with primary research in the form of an interview.